all my events have always been either on a Wednesday or a Thursday evening. Those have been like the best two days for me. So I haven't ever, you know, changed the script. If the model works, I don't mess with it. So that's what's been working for me. So I threw this on a Wednesday in the middle of my launch. So I couldn't even really promote much for this event going into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Walk 12 podcast. If you're tuning in on YouTube or any of the podcast directories, make sure to do yourself one teeny tiny little favor and make sure to give us a follow because I don't want you to miss out on any of the amazing episodes I got coming on this year. Without further ado, let's get right into this one. So if you've been keeping up with the series I've talked about so far, how I've hosted my first two events, right? The first one was a podcast interview. Second one was a live podcast interview. And now this will make the transition into happy hour style networking events. So I've been to tons of happy hour networking events and I was like, all right, let me do my own because I didn't want to keep doing podcast events because I was doing the podcast events at different milestones. And so for this, um, I was like, all right, well, I don't really have another podcast milestone. I just did another uh, you know, event a couple months prior. Let me do like a happy hour event. And so at the time, I still was working at Sign of the Whale. This is before I had quit. And so I was, it's funny because I was planning this event. I threw it on June 15th, right? And I ended up quitting or putting my two weeks in June 19th. June 15th, if I'm not mistaken, was like, day like two of my launch so i threw this event on a wednesday oh that's another thing i've been always throwing my events on wednesdays or thursdays it's always worked for me i haven't mentioned that in the first two episodes but all my events have always been either on a wednesday or a thursday evening those have been like the best two days for me so i haven't ever you know changed the script if the model works i don't mess with it so that's what's been working for me but yeah so i threw this on a wednesday in the middle of my launch. So I couldn't even really promote much for this event going into it. So I, I was coming from a conference. I had a conference I was going to and then preparing for the biggest launch ever for me at that time and or my first launch ever and biggest, of course. Um, and so I had a lot going on. So I barely did any promo for that event. Uh, a couple of weeks prior from that event in late May, I posted a photo on my IG. It was just like a Canva flyer and telling everyone that I am hosting an event. And then I, for that event, this is my first event that I charged. So Eventbrite, they started upping their fees and stuff like that. So I was looking for alternatives. I ended up finding this one tool called Simple Ticks, which is pretty solid. The only thing that sucks with Simple Ticks is that they don't have Apple Pay, which is trash. Like you have to put your credit card in info, info in. So that was dumb annoying. But yeah, I ended up doing it with Simple Ticks. I charged 20 bucks a ticket, ended up getting 39 tickets sold. Now, in terms of scheduling with Sign the Whale, I ain't leveraged the fact that I was an employee there. I ain't asked for any discounts or anything like that. I, you know, treat me as like a regular customer. Like I want to throw an event because you start asking for favors and stuff like that. And then people don't treat your event as seriously. So I was like, no, I'm paying in full. I'm not asking for no discounts, no nothing. Like treat me the same, if not better as you would like a full paying customer. Because sometimes... You know, when people know you, they get a little comfortable, you know? And so I was like, nah, I'm not having none of that. So I ended up, I'm talking to M. She's the event coordinator at the time. And I was telling her, like, all right, let's book for, like, 40 people. She was like, are you sure, John? Like, yeah. And I, let's do 30. So we ended up booking for 30 people. We had, uh, I gave out two free drink tickets and one, um, and it had appetizers that were going to be passed around, like pizza, chicken skewers, empanadas, things like that. And so I ended up coming out of pocket this event, maybe like 500 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, a little over 500 bucks, which wasn't all that bad between ticket sales. And then at this event, I didn't ask for any sponsor or anything. I also didn't have any, I didn't have any videographer at this event. As I said, I pretty much did no promo. This is like within two weeks, I sent out text messages. And from the first two events, I started building up my email list. So I had a, eh, a pretty small email list, but. It was something better than nothing, right? And I was sent out a couple emails. But one of the things I did to help get promote like um, publicity around it and promotion around it was I did what's called the the VIP guest strategy, <laughs> which I learned from Brandon. And so what I did I do is for people that I know are going to be there, like my boy Darren, Rob, Brandon, Guillory, like John, like all these people that I know are going to be there. Geo is another one that I always do. Um, I get a headshot of them. And I make a flyer on Canva that says VIP guest. It means absolutely nothing. 
right? They don't get any extra benefits. They don't get free admission. They don't get anything aside from a flyer saying VIP guest. And so the reason I do that is because then I'll post that flyer on my story and I'll tag them. And when I tag them and it shows up on their Instagram and then most, because they're my boys, most of the time, like they'll repost it, right? So now I'm promoting on my story, but now it's almost like this viral effect where like now they're promoting on their stories for their people to see. And that way I can stay top of mind. Because a lot of time with events, people procrastinate, people don't get their tickets to the last minute. And it's super hard because like then you're trying to figure out, all right, how much do you, do you like realistically should you plan for? So you, um, especially when you're getting food, you don't want to get too much food and it all goes to waste or not get enough food. And people are sitting there hungry, like, yo, I paid for food. And I didn't even get to eat. Right. That's always a bad thing, too. And so I was planning this with M. And we ended up planning for 30 people. I said we ended up getting 39 tickets. So not everyone showed up. Ended up being a great turnout. We ended up staying to like almost close. It was old, like super fun. Had a great time. I said, didn't really have much promotion, but because the first two events went so well within two weeks and almost minimal planning, because all my attention was focused on throwing my launch, doing my launch for my, um, my, uh, my course at the time, I ended up getting almost 35, 40 people in there in person in terms of people helping out because it was at a restaurant this time around. Um, it was, they had people on staff that were there. And then I think I had, did I have Jade? I forget who I had helping people with check-in. Um, I forget. I think maybe Jada. It's probably either Jada or Pam. One of those two always help out with my events. So I had them help out. And then the restaurant, I mean, they had all the drinks and stuff like that there. They had all the food and stuff there. So I didn't have to come out of pocket for any wine or any pizza or any food or anything like that. So that was super dope. And then we had a booked off a certain slot. And the way we had it is like we had a certain section of the bar. And then they gave us drink tickets. And so when people came in, I gave them their two drink tickets and then they put it on a running tab or on a tab. And then at the end of the event, all the people who bought, t- you know, if they used up their tickets, they had to purchase alcohol on their own tab. But for all the drink tickets that were used by, um, to buy drinks, that was put on one single tab. So it made playing for um, the event at the end super easy, super straight, like super simple. Because I'm not trying to figure out who ordered a, you know, a margarita or a mixed drink or something like that. Because it's only for beer and wine, which is a really good deal. I know people who charge uh, two drink tickets for beer and wine and light appetizers, and they're charging 55 bucks a ticket. So I was charging 20 bucks a ticket. So it was a steal. Great people, great time, good event. And so that's how I threw on my first ever happy hour networking event. I did it at the restaurant that I worked at. If you don't work at a restaurant, it's very, like, if you work, if you go to like a local like brewery, they're always the easiest and the best to work with for the most part because they want people, they want they want to get foot traffic, especially they're like local, they're in the community, they're in the heart of the community. It's like getting people that are also in the community to come and gather around for an event. There's sometimes like, I know people who have got, you know, you know, uh, a designated space without having to pay for anything. And then people just um, pay for their drinks on their own when they get there. So if you don't have the money um, to pay for a venue, also factor in ticket pricing. So like, how much do you need to pay? I mean, to break even, let's say you do an event for 30 people, and you need, you know, you need to make at least a 1000. Let's do some quick maths. A thousand divided by thirty, if I'm not mistaken, is like let's see, a thousand divided by thirty. Whoopsie. It's like thirty three. A thousand divided by thirty. Yeah, thirty three dollars. So you may have to charge thirty five dollar tickets. And so let me tell you some some wise words of wisdom that I learned from my friend Brandon. Right. When it comes to throwing events, if it's doing if it's a free event you're good like just texting people right or sending out an email right to get people to RSV, rsvp rsvp and confirm now if you're getting into paid events if it's under 30 bucks you're usually good with just texting people right if you just send out a quick text you're good um and people will probably rsvp they might, they might wait a little last minute they might procrastinate a little bit 
but usually at that price range under 30 bucks it's like very very minimal payment like you don't you're not really spending money like that so especially if you're getting drink tickets and appetizers just like yeah yeah i paid you know 20 bucks 25 bucks 30 bucks nice and simple once you get to like that 30 bucks to a hundred dollar range it's a lot harder to sell tickets so when you're throwing an event you got to think about all right what am i going to price the tickets at because from 30 to 100 my boy brandon suggests that you make a phone call like you're just in a text and you're over the price is over 30 um all right you have to make a phone call especially for these local events because networking events are a dime a dozen and so you have to really stand down. It's like if people are gonna be paying more than thirty bucks, like you have to have some type of value add, because or you have to know the people really well personally, because there's networking events going on all the time. And what's gonna make yours different than all the other events that are going on? And so that was like my reasoning for pricing it at twenty bucks. And um, this ended up being a longer episode than expected. So in the next episode, I'm gonna talk about how I threw my birthday networking event. That ended up being a great time. That was probably one of my most successful events, one of my biggest events, most fun events. So I'll tell you how that went in the next episode. But yeah, this is how I threw my first happy hour networking event ever. It was, as I said, with two weeks, very little promotion, very little planning, kind of put it together last minute, ended up getting close to 40 people, only came out of pocket, maybe 500 bucks. But um, I said, it was definitely well worth it because we had a good time, great people. And we ended up staying like maybe it was like 10, 15 of us, maybe like 10 of us ended up staying almost to like close. So that's how you know you throw a, you know you throw in a good event when people are staying the whole the whole time and then some. So that's all for this episode. I'll catch you guys in the next one.